Hi, everybody, and um, welcome to our very first podcast. And my first amazing guest of this series is called Melinda McDougall. And Melinda is an amazing herbalist, medical herbalist, who specializes in supporting women through menopause. And this is such a massive subject at the moment, Melinda, and something which certainly lots of my clients really want to know more details, what they can do. So we're really hoping that we can get some good concrete answers from you today and some good information. Um, and today's subject, the topic really around menopause is all about perimenopause. Um, what is it? And how will it affect us? Because lots of people, they kind of know what menopause is, but you know, they don't really know the definition between perimenopause and menopause. And also, how bad will it be? I think there's this whole dread around, oh my gosh, I'm going into these later years or these mid years of my life and what's going to happen to me? Um, and also the big question, is it possible to have a good menopause? So Melinda, welcome. Oh, thanks so much, Denise. It's really great to be here on your new podcast. Yeah, and great to be talking about this subject, which, you know, look, the more we talk about it, the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, there's lots to get our teeth into. Yeah, absolutely. So my first question, Melinda, to you is why is menopause such a great time for a reboot? Well, I, you know, people don't really think about menopause like that or perimenopause. You know, it's, it's, I mean, I'm really glad that people are talking about all of this a lot more, you know, because in our mother's generation, oh my God, nobody even mentioned it. And you were just supposed to put on your stiff upper lip and get on with it. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's great that we're talking about it now, but I do think that perhaps um, we've kind of tipped the conversation a little bit too far into a very negative space. Mm. And, you know, it, I, I think particularly for younger women that, you know, that they hear about all this stuff and they just think, oh my God, what is going to happen to me? Yeah. This sounds absolutely dreadful. Uh, but, you know, I have a bit of a different take on it because obviously I, I see a lot of clients who are going through it. And yes, you know, your symptoms can be quite severe and we'll talk more about all of that. But, you know, it's just such an important life transition to, to go through. Uh, and to really embrace it is, is a really positive thing, I think. And it's, um, it's just a great moment to really pause, you know, meno pause, you pause <laughs> in your life. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just have a really good look at your health, have a look at what's going on in your life and just think about, you know, how you want to feel, you know, going into the next stage of your life, you know, maybe address some of those health issues and address some of those other, you know, perhaps have some things in your life that need a bit of a bit of a change. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's a great, I, you know, I see it as a really positive moment in, in our lives, actually. Oh, I, I know women who are literally taking people off their, you know, phones saying, I don't want to be friends with that person anymore. That person really brings me down. Suddenly they've got this, I don't know whether it's a hormone surge. So they suddenly feel like they've got the power to do it. Um, but it's almost a time I feel certainly with lots of the clients that I see that people are just saying, okay, I'm not wasting any more time doing things I don't want to do. So it can be a bit of a cleanse. And I love yeah. your spin on it, that you're, you know, turning it into a positive because it's not, it's not an awful thing for everybody. Some people can go through menopause with the right diet, the right, you know, help, and they feel more empowered than they maybe did in their twenties and their thirties. So it definitely doesn't need to be a negative situation. No, definitely, you know, and I'm sure there, there, there are probably, um, you know, women out there listening to this who are just thinking, oh my God, but I feel dreadful and, you know, oh, this is absolute hell what I'm going through and I totally get that and I, and I am not um, undermining that or dismissing that at all. Yeah. Um, but there's so much you can do to yeah. feel better. You know, you must see that with your clients as well. Oh, all the time, all the time. So one of the things I'd love you to explain, Melinda, is what is perimenopause and what is the menopause? What's the difference between the two? 
Yeah, so um, the perimenopause is um, the years uh, leading up to the end of your periods. Um, and it can start, you know, for some women, it can actually start in your 30s. Um, for most women, it starts around your sort of mid 40s. Um, but it can last anywhere from sort of two to 12 years. So it can go on for quite a long time. And one of the first signs that usually, uh, you know, crop up is that your menstrual cycle starts becoming a little bit erratic. So, you know, if you've always had a fairly regular, you know, 28 day or 26 day or 30 day cycle, um, all of a sudden you might just see your cycle starting to lengthen or quite often what happens is your cycle starts to shorten. So you end up having, you know, maybe two periods a month, which is really annoying. <laughs> and then you can, and then, uh, you know, and then other symptoms might start cropping up. So the big thing about perimenopause that I don't think a lot of people realize is that your, it's, it's all about progesterone, really, that your progesterone really drops um, and your estrogen levels um, they go on a crazy roller coaster ride, so they can be up one week and down the next week. Yeah. I was showing someone a graph of this the other day of what our hormones do in perimenopause, and it literally looks like a child has gotten some crayons out and just scribbled all over the place because it's just a big mess. Yeah, like that, yeah. You know, yeah, and it but, feels like that. Yeah, but how would that make somebody feel? So when they start, when it starts to drop, their levels start to drop. And the estrogen is all over the place. How mm -hmm. would that make, just so that people who are listening yeah. to this can relate, how would they feel when that's happening? Yeah, so unfortunately, when your progesterone drops, that's usually a really big trigger for anxiety, um, you know, which really does start to kick in in the perimenopause. And you get a lot of, of, of women reporting that they feel really anxious all of a sudden and they just don't know where it's come from. Um, and with the high surges of estrogen, um, you get a lot of heavy bleeding. And, um, you know, the combination of both of them, you can get things like hot flushes, night sweats, um, uh, you know, brain fog, you know, all those lovely symptoms can start kicking in. Um, so yes, or it is like a child has just gotten hold of your hormones and done a massive scribble with them. I actually think perimenopause in lots of ways is um, more challenging than menopause itself. Right. Because it's so unpredictable. Okay. So then so this is when you're, so as you're saying, it's when your periods um, begin to, to stop. So when, I mean, I know you said the ages, but when, from sort of start, when your periods start to kind of get a little bit irregular to when they finally stop, is there a time scale or is that, can that be different in anybody? Yeah, it really varies, um, you know, from woman to woman. Um, uh, you know, the, the sort of average age of um, menopause is um, around uh, 50 to 51. Yeah. So that's when most people start, uh, you know, their periods sort of stop. Because obviously to be diagnosed as menopausal, yeah. you have to have not had a period for a whole year. Right. So that's the actual technical diagnosis of menopause, yes. the pause of your menses. Yes. Um, but around 80% of women have really had their final bleed by about the age of 54. Okay. But yeah, perimenopause is, um, you know, a lot earlier. So sort of 40s and even late 30s. Yeah. So when the periods finally stop, then what can somebody expect from that moment, <laughs> not that exact moment, but what, what happens next? Yeah, so I mean, it's all very much a sort of transitional phase that we're going through. Um, and, you know, this is when your estrogen and progesterone just really fall off. Yeah. Um, and then you get high levels of, of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Um, and this is when, you know, you'll get your anxiety in your mood swings, your hot flushes, your night sweats, you get a lot of vaginal dryness, low libido. Um, you know, because the, the thing is that blew my mind when I started looking into all of this was the fact that 
you know, we think of estrogen as a reproductive hormone, which it is, yeah. but we have estrogen receptors in nearly every single part of our body, right. you know, in our brains, in our cardiovascular system, in our bones, in our muscles, in our immune systems. Yeah. So when estrogen starts to fall off, you know, you, you get effects in all the, you know, your whole body responds to this um, loss of estrogen, yeah. um, which is obviously what we hear so much about and, you know, why HRT is so popular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so yeah. we're talking about yeah. that, by the way, in our next <laughs> yes. episode. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, but there's so many symptoms you can get, like weakened bladder muscles, joint pain, um, you know, heart palpitations, um, and, you know, loss of bone density as well. So, you know, and these symptoms can last from, from around four to 12 years. Okay. Um, but I do know women who've gone on for much longer with symptoms. Yes, I know. Well, my mum, for example, has have been having those symptoms for 20 plus years. And, but actually she's never been at a point where she needs to do anything about it. She's just kind of ridden the wave. And I know a lot of clients that are doing that as well. And if, I mean, would you say it's a hereditary thing? Is it something that can run in, you know, so if your mum has, so for example, if my mum has had a really good menopause, does that mean I will, or is it, does it not work like that? Well, that's so interesting that you say that, Denise, because um, this is actually one of the reasons I got into this area was because my mother as well had an awful, awful, awful menopause. Oh, really? And, you know, and yes, yeah, still has symptoms, you know, and she's kind of in her 70s now, you know, yeah. and I just... Was, I was just thinking, um, I really need to do something about this and I really need to learn as much as I can so yeah. I don't follow in her footsteps in that way. But you know what? I, I think maybe the timing of your menopause um, can follow a hereditary pattern. Yeah. But the severity of your symptoms, I don't think necessarily follow a hereditary pattern okay. um, because I think there's so many other factors um, especially in the modern world that we live in today that that impact the severity of our symptoms yeah is there anything in your view because I you know again going back to my mom and this is probably good for everybody to relate to my mom looks really young she looks good really good for her age so my theory is because she's still having fluctuating hormones and flushes it's keeping her young so is there a truth in what I've been telling her or will she now find out it's a complete lie that I've been saying, because you're still having symptoms, that's why you look so good. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she's probably got good genes. I mean, <laughs> see that looking at you. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that because you're still experiencing symptoms um, that that, that that means you know you're still having I mean you you know yes she will be ha still having surges of hormones if she's yeah. still getting all these symptoms um but that she's probably doing other things in her life to to make her yeah. feel and look good you know <laughs> yeah but, but e estrogen is sort of some people have this real issue with estrogen thinking it's the bad guy but I I mean I don't think it is what's your thoughts on estrogen um, how do you mean, how do you mean the bad guy? What in this whole menopausal picture? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's sort of linked to high levels of estrogen are linked to perhaps female cancers and things yes. like that. But yeah. if it's, if it's not completely out of control, it, it can actually be, be beneficial to the body. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, um, you know, high, you know, estrogen is a growth hormone. Yeah. in our bodies you know it it makes our womb linings thicken you know every month uh you know to to help fertilize and you know an embryo um but you know it can also cause you know breast cancer endometrial cancer um you know if you have too much estrogen in your body fibroids you know these are all high estrogen conditions yeah. um and i think in in perimenopause the high estrogen that's circulating in our body um, you know, it can cause so much heavy bleeding, which so many women suffer from. And yeah. that obviously leads on to anemia. Um, but um, certainly once you get through the menopause, yeah, you know, the, the more you can boost up your estrogen levels, the better, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's, I just wanted to sort of clear that up because <laughs> that's definitely a question that a lot of people have asked me. So, um, 
when you're sort of going through this perimenopause, a lot of women are, I think you mentioned right at the beginning of this conversation, are at a time in their lives, maybe things are changing or they're wanting to make change. So can that add to the stress and how does stress impact perimenopause and menopause symptoms? Oh, this is, you know, this is just my favorite topic, Denise, because... <laughs> Um, this is such, a, this is what I see in my practice all the time, that the more burnt out and stressed you are when you hit perimenopause and menopause, you know, the worse your symptoms are going to be. Yeah. And I think it's really hard for women in the 21st century at the moment going through all of this because we have so much pressure on us when we hit this stage of life you know, we might have teenagers, we might have babies. I mean, some women have yeah. just had a baby and they go yeah. straight into the menopause, you know, or they might have a toddler to look after, you know, you might be at the peak of your career, um, but, you know, quite stressed and burnt out at work. Mm. Um, you know, you might be looking after um, elderly parents, yeah. you know, it's like this, you might, you know, you might be going through a divorce, yeah. maybe bereavements going on I mean it's just a massive car crash of all these life events just all happening at once and yeah. then your hormones whack you in the face on top of everything else yeah yeah <laughs> so you know it's a really quite a stressful time I think for women particularly you know because we take so much on our shoulders mm. um you know it, it it can be really tough so this all causes stress in our body um it causes raise cortisol levels you know we pump out adrenaline when we're stressed and um, what i've really observed in in my clients is that um, when you have high cortisol levels from stress over a really long period um, it throws all of your other hormones completely out of whack yeah. And uh, it just really exacerbates all the menopausal symptoms, yeah. um, you know, and I'm sure you've seen that as well. Oh, so many times. And I think the other thing as well. So, you know, alcohol is one, another one as well. So if somebody is super stressed and then they're adding alcohol on top of that. I have seen, you know, clients of mine that are, that have so, uh, their anxiety is, you know, off the scale. Um, they feel dreadful. They can't think straight, you know, so as we go on through the next couple of episodes, we're going to be talking about, you know, the best things to do um, food wise, diet wise, exercise. Also, you know, Melinda's going to be telling us all about some really useful and helpful herbs that we can use um, to really get you through, power you through this, what could be an incredible time of your life where you can really make it count and you can have the best years of your life. You know, maybe they're ahead of us all, you know, Yes, so, exactly. And, and I'm a massive, massive fan of uh, mindset as well. And I think that, as you said right at the beginning, if we fear this time and we think we're going to go into it and it's going to be awful, then, you know, sometimes we can manifest that to happen. But there's so much we can do for the body, the mind, you know, physically, mentally and, you know, herbally. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm so excited to hear what you've got to say about how we can help ourselves to get through this. But thank you so much for all the information today. And I will look forward to our next episode. Thanks so much, Denise. Thanks, Melinda.